The Gordie Howe International Bridge is one of North America's most impressive megaprojects. From its location, straddling the Detroit River, to its record-breaking span, this bridge is truly a sight to behold. But it's not just about the stats. This bridge is changing the way people travel, trade, and connect. Welcome to Mega Builds, where we explore the world's biggest and most innovative projects. And today, the Gordie Howe International Bridge is in the spotlight. Let's get started. Before the Ambassador Bridge connected Windsor, Ontario and Detroit, Michigan, people faced a tricky challenge. See, there's this wide and deep river called the Detroit River in between. Great for ships, but not so much for people. So back then, trains used ferries to cart travelers across the river. Once they made it across, they would hop back on trains to keep going. Then, in 1929, things changed with the completion of the Ambassador Bridge. That was around the time when cars were becoming all the rage for getting around. Detroit and nearby areas had to rethink how people and goods moved about. So the Ambassador Bridge came to make things easier, especially for trade between Canada and the US. Every weekday, over 10,000 vehicles pay to cross the Ambassador Bridge. That's a lot of traffic. And get this, about $400 million worth of goods crosses between Canada and the US each day through the bridge. It's a big deal, especially for industries like cars, where parts need to flow freely between Michigan and Ontario. But here's where things hit a snag. The bridge can't keep up with all the traffic, about 9 million vehicles a year. Then, in 2022, there was a big problem. Blockades happened, stopping trucks from using the Ambassador Bridge. That caused chaos and got people thinking, maybe we need to rely less on just this one bridge. But there's a twist in this tale. The guy who owns the Ambassador Bridge, Manuel Maroon, isn't keen on competition. When plans for the Gordie Howe Bridge came up, Maroon wasn't happy. He even sued the government to stop it. Instead, he suggested adding another span to his bridge. Critics say it's because he didn't want to lose money from tax-free gas sales. The thing is, Maroon's idea isn't ideal. Adding a new bridge next to the old one creates security risks and could cause problems if roads nearby need to close. Plus, businesses depend on smooth border crossings. With over a billion dollars of goods crossing each day, having more options is crucial. By 2035, a new bridge could bring in about $240 million a year. But despite all the arguments and distractions, the Gordie Howe Bridge is still a go. Initially proposed in the early 2000s, the project, as mentioned earlier, faced significant opposition from the owner of the Ambassador Bridge. In response, the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority, a Canadian federal crown corporation, was established in 2012 to oversee the construction and management of the bridge. Environmental approvals and permits were obtained in both the United States and Canada during the early 2010s. Despite legal challenges from Maroon, who claimed exclusivity rights for the Ambassador Bridge, the courts rejected these lawsuits, allowing the project to proceed, including property expropriations. Designed by Eric Behrens, the chief bridge architect at ACOM, the Cable State Bridge will feature two towering A-shaped bridge towers standing at 722 feet tall. Supported by 216 cable stays, it will boast the longest main span of any cable stayed bridge in North America, stretching 2,800 feet with a total length of 2.5 kilometers. Rising 151 feet above the water at its highest point, the bridge will accommodate six lanes of automotive traffic alongside a dedicated bicycle and walking path. On the Canadian side, the bridge will link to an extension of Highway 401, known locally as the Right Honourable Herb Gray Parkway, on its eastern end. This below-grade parkway features six through lanes, following Talbot Road and Huron Church Road from a new interchange at the former end of Highway 401 to the EC Row Expressway. It then runs concurrently westward for two kilometres before turning northwest along a new alignment to the border. The parkway incorporates 300 acres of green space and over 20 kilometres of recreational trails, with seven bridges and two tunnels separating the trails from roads. Construction of the parkway commenced in 2011 and concluded in November 2015, with a total cost of $1 billion. 
The construction of the Right Honourable Herb Gray Parkway, which connects to the Canadian Bridge, faced challenges due to concerns about its potential impact on the last known habitat of Butler's garter snakes in Ontario. Biologists worked to relocate the snakes, including eastern fox snakes, and discovered a larger population of garters than initially estimated. Specially designed fencing was implemented along affected portions of the EC Row Expressway to protect their new habitats. In the United States, the bridge will link to Interstate 75 with dedicated ramps. Additionally, three kilometers of the highway will be reconstructed and widened, local roads will be enhanced, and new pedestrian bridges will be constructed across the highway. Noise walls will also be erected to minimize disruptions to the southwest Detroit neighborhood. The bridge's multi-use path will serve as the first legal pedestrian crossing over the Detroit River, connecting to local streets and trails on both sides. It will become part of the Trans-Canada Trail, integrating trail networks on both sides of the river, including the Canadian Great Lakes Waterfront Trail and the American Iron Bell Trail. Crossing the bridge on foot or by bike will be free of charge. Anticipating a surge in border traffic from 18,500 vehicles daily in 2016 to 26,500 by 2025, the Gordie Howe International Bridge will ensure a smooth and efficient flow of people and goods between the United States and Canada. Transport Canada has enlisted engineering firms Morrison Hirschfield, Davis Langdon and Declan to develop comprehensive cost estimates covering the right-of-way and utility relocation, design and construction, and operation and maintenance on the Canadian side of the crossing. If you're wondering why it was named Gordie Howe, you're probably not alone. Gordie Howe, known as Mr Hockey, was a Canadian professional ice hockey player who played for the Detroit Red Wings and Hartford Whalers in the NHL. He was renowned for his versatility, toughness and scoring ability, holding numerous records during his career. The bridge honors his legacy by connecting Detroit, Michigan and Windsor, Ontario, two cities deeply rooted in hockey culture. This bridge serves as a symbol of unity and strength, reflecting Howe's impact on the sport and his ability to bring people together. Now, let's delve into the significant achievements that have been made over the past few years. Towers measuring 220 meters were erected, guided by the demanding criterion of a 125-year service life, a benchmark rarely seen in bridge projects. Despite concerns about climate change and sustainability, the experts found that extending the service life had minimal cost implications. Canada Day, July 1, 2020, marks the beginning of concrete placement for the tower footings culminating in 7,600 cubic meters poured over six months. 2021 saw the focus shift to tower leg construction with innovative techniques employed to combat gravity's effects, such as cambered legs and temporary cross beams. By July 2021, the crucial tie beam, important for balancing horizontal forces, was successfully installed at grade level and post-tensioned. Lifting the first deck element on the Canadian side on March 29, 2022 was a huge accomplishment, given the corrosive climate near Zug Island's industrial district. To fight corrosion, a long-lasting three-coat paint technique was used, designed to endure 40 years in such tough environments. On July 27, 2022, the first steel anchor boxes, which are critical for fastening cables, were installed on the US Tower. The bridge was initially projected to cost $4.4 billion, later it was revised to $5.7 billion. But today, the cost has risen to $6.4 billion, as announced by the groups overseeing its construction. It's anticipated that the bridge will open for vehicles in the fall of 2025, a delay from the original target of November 2024. The federal government, acknowledging the challenges faced, is covering the additional $700 million, waiving penalties for the extended timeline. The Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority, WDBA, managing the project on behalf of the federal government, and the Consortium of Contractors, Bridging North America, BNA, have mutually agreed to adjust the project's cost and schedule. This decision comes in light of unforeseen disruptions due to the COVID-19 pandemic, impacting construction progress like many other endeavors. Despite the setbacks, 
The extended timeline allows for an enhanced community benefits plan and supports the local economy. With 11 million worker hours already invested and more to come, the delay is viewed positively in terms of economic contribution. Looking ahead, the next step for this project is to complete the connection between the two sides of the river. This includes the installation of the road deck that will link the two countries, as well as the 216 cable stays that will support the bridge. Project leaders are confident that they are on track for completion in 2025. Without a single doubt, the Gordie Howe Bridge stands as a beacon of progress, ushering in a brighter tomorrow with a host of promising benefits woven into its very fabric. Foremost amongst these is the promise of smoother traffic flow, banishing congestion and delays to usher in a new era of seamless travel. This enhanced connectivity isn't just about saving time, it's about reducing fuel consumption and emissions, paving the way for a greener, more sustainable transportation network. But the bridge's impact goes beyond mere logistics. It's a catalyst for economic revitalization on both sides of the border. By creating jobs and fostering cross-border trade, it breathes new life into local economies, fostering growth and prosperity for communities along its path. With goods and services flowing freely, businesses thrive, sharpening their competitive edge and exploring fresh opportunities in untapped markets. Yet perhaps the bridge's most profound significance lies in its symbolic power as a testament to international cooperation and unity. It's a tangible embodiment of the enduring bond between Canada and the United States, showcasing the fruits of collaboration and shared values. Beyond its practical function, the Gordie Howe Bridge serves as a bridge of cultures, knitting nations together and charting a course towards a more interconnected global community. As we gaze towards the horizon, it's clear that the bridge's impact will transcend its physical form. It's a living testament to what can be achieved through collaboration and bold vision, inspiring future generations to dream big and embrace the transformative power of infrastructure. Its completion marks not just the end of construction, but the beginning of a new chapter in our shared journey towards progress and prosperity. So, as we eagerly await the ribbon-cutting ceremony, let's take a moment to ponder the endless possibilities that lie ahead. What are your thoughts on this bridge? Share your insights and stay tuned for more updates on the monumental projects shaping our world.